or you can also find me on Twitter at Alec Parkin. <clears throat> so, um, there we go. Um, so let's have a quick chat about animation locally in Northern Ireland. Um, so over the last 10 years, uh, animation has been growing here in this part of the country uh, quite rapidly. It's one of the fastest growing areas of animation uh, across the UK uh, in this sector. Um, oh, hello. Somebody else talking. That's what it is. Um, so we've got, uh, we've got some larger animation studios such as Jam Media, 16 South, who typically employ around 100 people or so. Paper Owl Films, probably around 50 or so. Um, Humane, about 20 or so. And then we've got um, some up and coming games companies as well. Italic Pig, Billy Goat, White Pot Studios, and NGS who do visual effects and games. Um, so they're just a small collection of some of the studios that are around locally in Northern Ireland. Um, and we have graduates, our graduates working in all of these different places, um, which is fantastic um, as animators, designers, um, modelers, uh, different types of artist roles, which we'll get into shortly. Um, so there is a, a good community here in Northern Ireland in terms of uh, commercial animation. Um, and we continue to hopefully, hopefully grow this area uh, with the graduates we are um, teaching um, here at Ulster University. Um, so animation and VFX in the sort of island of Ireland and the Republic of Ireland um, is a little bit uh, more mature than uh, Northern Ireland. Um, there's more companies that have been around for a little bit longer. Um, for example, we've got uh, Cartoon Saloon, uh, Brown Bag Films, Boulder Media, who've been around uh, for quite a while um, doing feature films and TV uh, series as well. Um, giant animation where we've got a couple of graduates at at the moment um, are doing 3D animation for uh, film and TV. Um, you've got other uh, 2D animation studios like Cavalier and Lighthouse Studios um, and new and up and coming studios like uh, Elk Studios and Studio Mellor as well who are doing some really interesting work um, as well across the Republic of Ireland. And across the, uh, across the mainland UK again um, you have uh, some really, really large players in terms of animation and VFX globally. Um, and we've got companies such as Moving Picture Company, MPC, uh, where I used to work, um, Double Negative, d -Neg, The Mill. They're all uh, quite um, mature visual effects studios within uh, central London, um, producing top end VFX for uh, the latest blockbusters, um, for example, the, the Marvel films, um, You've got uh, the Harry Potter films, which are done by these companies as well. The Mill did Gladiator back in the day as well. So these guys have been around a long time and doing uh, top end feature film work. Um, and then you've got uh, other companies like The Third Floor, who focus on previs, which is part of the pre production pipeline. Blue Zoo, who do TV animation and commercial animation. Uh, Framestore, again, another big um, visual effects hub in London. Um, you've got Studio AKA, who are a sort of smaller, more commercial based animation company. And you've got companies like Ardman, I'm sure you've heard of as well, who do Wallace and Gromit um, and Plasticine and Animation. But they also do digital animation for commercials as well, uh, which they're not, not as widely known for, but they do a lot of uh, really cool commercial work. And you've got uh, other up-and-coming animation studios like Jellyfish as well. So this is, again, just a small selection of some of the bigger animation studios um, in the mainland UK. There are hundreds of other uh, smaller to medium-sized businesses as well. Um, so I just wanted to talk uh, a little bit about some of the roles within some of these studios and some of the roles our students and graduates uh, tend to go towards after graduating from the animation course. Um, so we have really sort of three main areas within a animation studio. You've got uh, pre-production, production and post-production. So pre-production usually comes first. Um, it's what happens, it's the design element of what happens. Uh, for, a, for example, a TV series or a commercial or a film, um, you'll start with a concept, usually a storyboard or a previs. Um, you've got designer roles, um, working on the idea for your pre-production of your, of your film or your TV series. Um, so the concept artist will usually start by taking notes from the director or the writer um, and starting to flesh out uh, those ideas from the script um, into a visual 
concept for the rest of the team to kind of see or get a feel for what the idea might look like early on. And usually the concept artist will um, work with a lot of different sort of different styles, um, try like, different types of looks uh, that the writer and the director are kind of aiming towards. Um, once they've signed off the concept, they'll tend to uh, pass that on to the designers or design team uh, to start fleshing out more of the sort of art and assets and the look of the piece. Um, if it's a narrative-based piece, like a film or a TV series, um, or even a commercial, they'll have storyboard artists um, plan out the layout and general um, camera angles, um, the cinematography of the narrative based on the concept art and the design art um, at that stage. So that's kind of the sort of main area of pre-production. More recently, um, previs, which is 3D pre-visualization, is what it stands for. Um, it's sort of the next stage after the storyboard, after an animatic, they'll have a 3D, uh, fly through a 3D um, production, um, which is quite basic, but it kind of helps out with the timing. And again, the camera positions of the work before it goes into production. Uh, and then you have the production. So you have roles such as animators, um, 3D artists, 3D prop and environment artists, 3D character artists, if it's a 3D show or 2D character artists, if it's a 2D animated show. Um, riggers, 2D or 3D, depending on what the production uh, needs. Visual effects artists, uh, look development and lighting artists, depending on the production. So again, these are just uh, a couple of key roles. There are lots of other roles within this as well, but these are, tend to be the sort of roles we focus on within um, the animation course. And then uh, after that, you have sort of the post-production process. So uh, compositors, um, a couple of our graduates have gone into sort of compositing-based roles where they take the production work and maybe maybe the lighting and rendering team have split up um, different elements, different assets into different layers. A little bit like you do with Photoshop where you put together um, a composition of an image or a um, kind of like a collage. You kind of take all of these different aspects and kind of put them back together, adjust the lighting, adjust the balance of the um, gray, grading of the colors and things like that in the post-production area. And again, there's lots of other post-production roles such as editors um, and so on. So, uh, Again, these are just kind of the sort of main areas we kind of focus on within animation. Um, so I wanted to talk about a few of those roles where some of our graduates have gone into these uh, different categories. Um, so Jordan Bradley, she graduated in 2017 and she now works for a company called Italic Pig who I mentioned back on one of the early slides. Italic Pig are a games company um, based in Hollywood, uh, just outside of Belfast. Um, and Jordan, she's a concept artist and designer, and she also designed the current game title they're working on at Italic Pig called Paleo Pines. Um, so she's also a game designer for that game, which is fantastic. They secured um, a publisher to work uh, with the team on Paleo Pines as well, and it's due to be released next year, I believe. Um, if you'd like to go find out more about Bradley's work and uh, what she's doing, you can go to our art station there. Um, another one of our graduates, Amy KP, Amy Cook and Preacher, um, is a lead animator at Taunt Studios and Taunt are based in Belfast as well. They're a commercial, um, uh, commercials based um, TV studio. Um, they've got Amy's uh, Instagram page up here. She does a lot of um, sort of concept design work. Again, loves her big cats um, and dragons, um, but she's a lead animator over at Taunt. If you want to check out some of her work, you can find her on Instagram. Um, and one of our graduates, Kerry McCormick, uh, she specializes in 3D uh, creature modeling um, and lighting and look development. Um, so Kerry has been working with Jam Media, again, in Belfast um, over the last two years. Uh, in lighting rendering and 3D modeling. So if you want to check out some of Carrie's work, some of her creature and ca uh, character work, uh, go check her out there. Um, and uh, some of our students, some of our older graduates um, have started up their own businesses as well. So Fiona McLaughlin, Fiona McLaughlin sorry, uh, graduated in 2015, I think it was 2015. 2016, 2015, um, 
And Fiona um, worked with NTS for a while and then worked over in Germany. And after she returned back to Belfast, um, she co-founded Torrent Studios with Tom Getty. Um, and they have now hired a couple of our graduates, for example, Amy KP, uh, who I just talked about, um, and some of our placement students as well. And they're now working um, with alt animation on a TV series, uh, as well as different types of commercial things and different commercial animation as well. So our, our graduates are not only working within different studios across uh, the UK and uh, the rest of the world, um, but they're also starting their own studios and having great success with that as well. Um, so the main question is for you guys, how, how do you get there? How do you get to working in a animation or game studio uh, in the future? Um, so within the animation course that we teach at Ulster University, um, we have a free or four year program. The three year program is a standard three year degree. Um, a lot of our students tend to opt for the four-year program, which uh, includes an optional placement or study abroad year as well. Um, so let's have a quick look at what happens in each year, what we teach um, our students in each year of the course. So um, animation at Austin University in year one, we focus a lot on the uh, fundamentals of animation and art and design for animation. So semester one, we have two modules. We have um, Animation Studio, which is a, a studio-based module where we do a lot of design work um, and look at the basics of animation. We focus mostly on um, 2D animation, 2D design in this first module um, to kind of keep, get the concepts across, for example, composition, perspective, animation principles, um, character design, and these sort of ideas are all in semester one, where we really kind of lay the foundation work before we kind of move more uh, technically into different aspects of 3D and 2D animation software. Um, we also focus on narrative design in first year as well. So second semester, uh, we look at animation design, narrative design for animation, and our students make their first sort of short animated film in groups at, towards the end of their first year. Um, so you can see some examples of our work from over the last year from our first year students. You can see them uh, practicing their animation, practicing their design, the total ideas, their composition theory uh, through design work. Um, so this is the first year animation lab. Um, this is what it looks like in September when it's all nice and clean. Um, and you can see we have lovely sort of open windows um, to let in natural light. Uh, you can't see it on this side, but the wall on the left-hand side we use as a design space as well. So our students can design on the walls and windows uh, with uh, whiteboard markers. And you'll see when I go to the next slide, which is halfway through semester one, so about uh, late October, November sort of time, here we are. So this is the living and breathing animation first year room um, as it's meant to be. Uh, when students are sharing ideas, collaborating on the ideas uh, for their first project where they're designing a world um, within animation. So you can see here that the students are kind of really making use of the space and the walls, and the windows um, and the desks. And uh, something you'll find fairly interesting here as well, um, our animation rooms aren't laid out like typical computer labs, they're not like rows of computers. Um, there's a specific design reason for this. Um, the computers here are on, are on the sides of the desks um, with a large open space in the middle of the desk. This is to allow for clearer communication so students can kind of keep eye contact with each other and talk about ideas uh, across the desk space, share a sketchbook, share pages and post notes and whatever else. And then they can kind of, when they're ready to kind of use the computers to uh, do some design work on, they can move to the sides then and work in those computers or use their laptops. Um, but we want to keep the space open and collaborative um, in our animation studio rooms. We don't want to have uh, rows of desks like a, like a um, science lab effectively, because um, it's supposed to be a collaborative, uh, innovative and experimentation sort of space within uh, this first year studio room. So that's kind of the vibe we have in our studio spaces. Um, so after first year, uh, we move into second year and we start looking at more uh, sort of technical techniques of animation in 3D and 2D. 
um, visual effects and also uh, compositing and post-production as well. Um, so I have two examples here from some of the second year work uh, from the previous year. Um, the piece on the left is a group project where our students had to model an environment, model and texture and light a 3D environment uh, in real time. So using a game engine. In this case, we used Unreal Engine um, to render a light uh, an environment and have a fly through camera so they can explore this 3D world they've created in real time. Um, and real time is like a, a video game where you, you see the world, you see the 3D assets um, rendered uh, in real time so you can move around uh, and interact with the uh, environment without having to wait for the computer to load it, um, as opposed to offline rendering, which you tend to get in films and TV production where um, images are, are rendered on a, on a server somewhere else um, and it takes a while for those images to come back uh, and be computed. So uh, we've kind of got a focus on real-time animation at the moment, uh, real-time rendering workflows within our second year cohort. Um, and the second piece to the right is a walk cycle series. So do a lot of animation studies with body movements, weights and walks uh, in second year as well. So you can see this pace by um, uh, John Desmond here, a 2D walk cycle, which has come across really well. Um, so we kind of focus our students in kind of thinking if they want to go down a sort of 3D pipeline or a 2D pipeline, but we give them the options for both. And we kind of train our students uh, in both areas as well. Um, so after second year, uh, students have the option to take a placement or study abroad year. Um, it's an optional year out and uh, students can help to take a six to 12 month industry placement or study abroad options in America and Europe. Um, because of the current COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, this year it might be a bit more difficult. Um, I don't know if any students are going out to America or Europe this year, I don't think so, unfortunately. Um, although some of our students are still finding and securing placements uh, locally and across the rest of the UK as well, which is great. Um, after placement year or after second year, depending what options the students take, um, we have our final year. Now, our final year is focused around um, a 80 credit, so it's two semester module where our students create a animated piece of work um, or a portfolio based project. Um, and that lasts all year, so all of our year is kind of dedicated to your major project. Now you have two other modules as well. In semester one, you have your dissertation module, which is your academic um, underpinning for your major project. So you can kind of take a dissertation topic, which is maybe related to, for example, your major project, and uh, write an academic um, dissertation on that topic. Um, and then in second semester, you have another module alongside your major project as well called Creative Futures. The Creative Futures is um, a guest lecture series and uh, design uh, workshop uh, to kind of get you guys ready for um, creating your portfolios, your showreels, um, and other art assets for your end of your show uh, and for preparing for your future careers as well. So we tend to have guest lectures from uh, people in the industry about their own careers, how they started, um, and how they've kind of uh, maybe sh shifted and changed their career paths in different ways uh, throughout their artistic career as well. So um, we always invite guest, guest speakers to kind of talk in this module as well. Um, talking more about the major project, um, I'm going to show you guys some of the work by the current Filia students, or I should say the new graduates. They've just finished up and they've just graduated uh, this, uh, this last month. Um, so you can kind of get a taste and a flavor of what they've been up to as well. You can see here, traditionally, we do an end of year show in June. Unfortunately, we can do a physical show uh, this year, again, due to the current pandemic. Um, we can see these images here. The students uh, set up their shows uh, this way across the room at the end of year um, with the computers and uh, printouts of all the work they've been doing throughout the year. Uh, this year, on the 26th of June, we have our... Um, an alternative online end of year showcase for our animation students. Um, so I could ask uh, for the link to be sent out uh, on that later on. Um, that's going to be next Friday, Friday the 26th of June at seven o'clock. So we're going to do a YouTube stream of all of the final projects uh, from this year. So you can see them all uh, then if you want to. Um, so this is the final year 2020 animation student reel. 
um, from our final year students. So I'll play this. Hopefully you can hear the sound. You think you should be able to. So that was the uh, sort of teaser reel of uh, all of our final year students' work from this year. And again, you can see the full uh, full projects on the 26th of June, if you would like to. Um, so a little bit of uh, extra information about the course. Um, we have around 150 students total in the undergraduate course. Um, each year, we usually have a high percentage of placement students or study abroad students uh, going out on their optional year as well. This year is a little bit different. I don't think we're going to have as, uh, as many student out from placement as we usually would um, just because of the cur current uh, COVID pandemic, unfortunately. Uh, saying that, a lot of our graduates are already being um, offered jobs already, which is great. Um, so a lot of our graduates are kind of very, finding work quite quickly as it is. I should say that... Um, Parts of the animation sector uh, in terms of visual effects and post-production um, are a little bit quiet at the moment because a lot of the on-film sort of set work has been uh, put on pause. Um, but a lot of the companies who are just focused purely on animation or games uh, are still going strong. They're still looking for lots of people. Um, so those are two areas which, um, when you don't have to have uh, live action footage filmed for, for the work, uh, the rest of the sort of industry is still going as normal, which is great. Um, this year we had 80% of students uh, receive a T1 uh, or above, so a T1 or first um, were received by our FIALE students this year, which is fantastic. Um, our graduates are working in all aspects of the uh, sort of film, animation TV sector, animation TV, games, immersive tech, VR, for example, um, and creative startups. So we had a look at some of those uh, graduates earlier, Jordan, Kerry, um, Fiona, and Amy um, as examples. Um, we have a new uh, Masters of Animation program as well, which is, as well, which is a one-year uh, master's course. Um, so some of our final years sometimes decide to take an, uh, an extra year as well and do their master's with us. Um, and sometimes uh, our, some of our students kind of go away and work for a few years and then come back and do their master's if they want to kind of um, spend a year and try something a little bit different. So the master's course is there if anyone's interested even if you decide to go into a different artistic um, course, so for example, if you go to graphic design and illustration, or if you go to photography, but you still want to um, learn animation, the master's course is there. If you, if you come from another creative discipline as well, or another design-based course, um, you can consider to take the, the master's course in the future if you want to. Um, and a lot of our, our graduates have been nominated and won lots of different types of awards as well for their films and their work. Um, in placements as well. For example, we've had uh, one of our students win the CGI Student of the Year Award. Um, our students have won Emmy Awards for their work in Game of Thrones during their placement years. Um, we've had nominations for Sundance. We've won um, Best Films at BFX and uh, the Dublin Animation Film Festival, the Dingle Animation Film Festivals. Um, so we've had lots of success, or our graduates have had lots of success with their sort of final year work and their placement year work. Uh, with us, which is fantastic. Um, and a little bit about the makeup of our animation team. Um, 
all of our uh, lecturers, um, our teachers, our, our um, technicians are all active within uh, the creative sector, within research and productions. Um, we've got PhD, PhD students uh, with topics studying, I believe, or, or character design, uh, Japanese animation studies. Um, our lecturers, for example, Dr. Yuan Chen, is uh, focused her research on reframing Chinese anim animation uh, or non-commercial animation uh, looking into uh, different aspects of that. Um, Greg McGuire and Erica Rosenberg are looking at uh, facial action coding systems. Uh, Professor Greg McGuire has also runs uh, Humane, which is a spin-off uh, company from the university, um, focused on real-time facial animation and facial uh, rigging systems. Um, myself, I'm looking at virtual production and real-time visualization as a potential PhD topic area. Um, Dr. Henry Belke has recently finished his PhD and is currently researching more into character believability models. Um, Sarah Dargy, who joined us last year, is currently working on her uh, Masters of Education um, course and is also participating in creating a new uh, short film. Um, and we're lucky to have uh, funding in different areas from across the country. Uh, currently, Future Screens and I is a um, hub for funding um, for commercial uh, projects, uh, which also include uh, academic staff as well. So within that, I'm currently looking at real-time animation and 4K rendering work as well. Um, so those are just a, a little bit of the idea of sort of the research background and the expertise of the staff here at the animation course at Ulster University. Um, so that kind of brings me to the end of my, my talk really. Um, so I'm happy to open it up now for uh, questions if people want to use the uh, Q&A option um, up here. 